it feels as though the building is alive. It's equivalent to walking into a cathedral uh, or any great building. We're standing now in the engine house of Crossness Pumping Station and the pumping station was part of the first sewer system ever built for London. In the 1700s, 1800s, a rapidly going, growing city, population of London in 1800 about 1 million just over, and by 1900 a population of 6 million. An added problem was caused by the invention of the flushing water closet. The problem was there was nowhere for the waste to go. The addition of the water closet and flushing an extra two gallons of water into the system every time it was used caused the tributaries of the Thames to overflow. The Thames itself effectively becomes an open sewer. In addition, you've got cholera appearing in this country in 1831-32. And then in 1858, the year of the Great Stink, the Thames was making its presence known to the members of House of Commons. They were forced into doing something and rushed through a bill in about 18 days to build uh, a sewer system based on Joseph Bazalgette's design, which he'd been working on for a couple of years. And Crossness is opened in 1865 a massive piece of civil engineering and immediately had an impact on London in terms of the eradication of cholera. Bazalgette constructed over a thousand miles of street sewers. Those street sewers fed into intercepting sewers huge great underground pipes from the west to the east. The sewage flowed by gravity. So all that sewage arrives here at Crossness, deep underground. It is 12 miles downstream from London Bridge. So our four mighty beam engines here lift the sewage from that low level and push it into an enormous great reservoir behind our site. Twice a day, in the outgoing ebbing tide, the sewage was released on that tidal river, away from the high population of London, and in so doing, saved countless, countless lives. this and to know that Victorians actually lay their hands on this, you, you make a connection with them. It's almost like the engines are talking to you. Now this place, I mean, it's just somewhere that gives you total satisfaction. You come here, you know you've achieved something. I'm learning new skills all the while. Just keeps you fully occupied and gives you something to, to look forward to. Yeah, we've got four engines, Victoria, Prince Consort, Alexandra and Albert Edward. The, t the two that we are working on is Victoria and Prince Consort, and the other two we are just going to leave as they are in their rusty condition. We're all team, um, all different teams here. We work as teams and it wouldn't operate if it wasn't for teamwork. I'm primarily team Victoria, right? And so we're responsible for renovating Victoria to bring it back to its working glory. It's, it's, um, it's healthy competition. We feel that Prince Cook Consort has been taking all the load. So I, I think once Victoria comes online, she'll be able to um, help him out. To actually get one of these up and running would, would take 20 years. So far, 15 years has been put into Victoria. That's including things like taking the pistons apart. We needle gun them, taking off layers of rust, undercoating, applying a number of layers of paint, and then eventually we'll reassemble them. But I, I would say we've got another five or six years. Every day I come in, I, I, I can see the little progress that we make. And, and that's very exciting for me. I 
I think it's intriguing that there's so much decoration around the building. It was isolated, it wasn't uh, very close to the population in this area. No reason for people to come here. And it, it goes back to this concept of Victorian pride in what they did. Uh, it wasn't enough to build a utilitarian building to pump sewage. It had to look good as well. The decorations on these pillars do have a, do have a meaning. They are figs and the little red dots are centipods. And this is Victorian education and probably humour, because what are they? Laxatives. There is actually a little carving at the top of one of the windows there, and it is the face, the portrait of Joseph Balsajad. It's called the Cathedral on the Marsh, for good reason, I think. down below. They're going to pour in their sewage. It's flowing now through those clear pipes, the street sewers, into the huge white intercepting sewers. Lifting that sewage from deep down below. What's happening down this end? The Trust run an education programme for little ones right up to elders, but very much at the core is hands-on learning. Yeah, I learned more about like um, the water systems and the sewage, it's really interesting. I think it's really cool, I really like the decorations. Crossness was a workplace, but it was also a home. It was very remote then. The workers had to live here. There were 31 homes here. People lived here. They had their own allotments. There was a men's and, and a women's cricket team. I played cricket on the grass area on top of the reservoir. And, and, and I went to school here as well. I, lo I love the stories of people who tell me my great grandparents, they met here that they, they, they were both living at Crossness and they met here and they got married and their children were born here. So just that the, the whole um, personal aspect really bring, brings it to life and reminds you that it wasn't just a workplace. This is the museum store where we keep the artefacts when they're not on display upstairs in the boiler house. We had an archaeological dig on site and they found some items which the workers were using. For example, these leather measuring tapes, oil cans, and even a pair of leather boots that belong to one of the workers. There were points during 2021 when the amount of money we had available was so low that we were contemplating closing the trust down. So the Culture Recovery Fund has been very important to us in terms of allowing us to keep going, basically. You can read about heritage, but until you actually become part of it, it's difficult to actually understand. I am part of something, and there's, there's no feeling greater than that. 